That's right. I'd like to congratulate you on being appointed the uh, new uh, director of coaching at Parramatta Rugby and uh, taking over from a wonderful person in, in, in Glenn, our previous coach. Yes. I know over the last three years you've been uh, the assistant coach, and which I think gives us continuity into the future. But I'd like to sort of step back a little bit and find out a little bit about yourself personally, about um, your, your playing career and where it started and, and things like that. So could you talk to us about that, please? Uh, yes. Like everyone else, um, rugby, as, as a Kiwi, rugby is almost ingrained. It's part of your DNA. You don't really have a choice as other rugby or cricket. I prefer rugby cricket system. Did you ever play cricket? No. I did. I never, I never did. I never made the cricket team, but anyway. Yeah, I played cricket. Uh, I've had a four for a year. It only lasted a year. Wasn't my sport. I was too impatient for cricket. Um, but rugby was something that I kind of fell into. Um, it wasn't my number one sport growing up. Uh, athletics was the stronghold in our household. So growing up was basically athletics every Saturday, every Sunday. And I really only got into rugby because I was, I was fast. And I was small. I wasn't the biggest uh, bloke out there. So I mean, it's hard to believe most of the islanders are all quite fairly fairly decent side, but I was a scrawny, scrawny kid that just hung out wide and and so basically just used my speed. So where did, where did you play most of your football? So in Wellington, I grew up in, in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, that's where I was born and raised, uh, in Wellington. So it's one of those strongholds where there wasn't really any other viable option in terms, from, uh, in terms of the sporting uh, really. At our presentation day, you talked about the history of Parramatta and things like that and the culture, and it's starting to come through now about the passion that you have. So how do you see harnessing that in, as, as a player and now coming in as, as the coaching director of, of, of Parramatta? The word culture is, is used quite loosely, I believe, uh, but when you really go down to the micro aspect of the word culture, what is culture? Everyone has their own definition of what's culture, what culture means to them. Um, but from my understanding, what I'd like to uh, maintain from what where Glenn's uh, left off is having everyone on the same page in terms of understanding that culture is a word that everyone should move towards in terms of a winning environment, a competitive environment, and a friendly environment where anyone from the back of the streets can walk in throw the ball around, but feel comfortable in doing that. It's this surrounded by a family orientated club, uh, as opposed to walking into a business-like um, job where it's a chore to turn up the trains. That's not what we're trying to achieve here moving forward. So if we can put the fun and social aspect of life into the rugby organisation, everything else should fall into place. So is the rugby is a, is a team sport, it's not an individual sport, so working as a collective group is the buy-in. You've got to put your individual um, aspects aside and just work together as a collective group. If you can't do that, there's no way of moving forward, really. So what about you know, now moving into you know, first grade in you know, 2014? I know you've already started. Is like that man management with uh, challenging them to, 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 to stand together and to be part of the team and all those types of things. How, how do you see you doing, doing that or continuing that? I know... Glenn worked on as his first goal was to you know, get respect yeah. uh, from the opposition and the other clubs. So, so where do you see yourself doing? Or? I'll continue on with that um, in terms of um, earning respect from not only your peers that you'll be coaching against, but also as an organisation. It's been a hard slog the last couple of years to where Para were uh, in the dark, of the dark ages as well as moving forward. But respect is something that you still got to earn from time to time, it's not something that you just earn once and then, uh, it's a guarantee. Um, I'm new in terms of a head coaching role as well as, you know, director role or whatever you want to call it. So, my first formation moving forward is not so much earning the respect of, of, the, of my fellow colleagues. I've got to earn the respect of this club first and the players first and foremost before I start worrying about what's going on um, externally. Um, in the off-season, I'd like to get to know the players a lot better, um, especially from a personal perspective. I find that this is just an I speak from my experience as a player and with the coach that I've dealt with that not one glove fits all. You've got to manage 
yeah. as well as massage certain players uh, and get a better understanding of what life is like outside the rugby field. And that's all part of moving forward like with the vision or philosophy of 2014, which is if we can nurture the homegrown talent and grow good people, men and women, half the job's already done. Rugby's a byproduct, you know, and a lot of people say you always look for talent. This player's talented and that player's talented, but talent can only get you so far. And tell them it's more of an individual uh, base um, commodity, yeah. so, which in a, in a team sport can only go so far. So I'd rather have people that will go beyond the call of duty work for the team as opposed to putting themselves before the team and club. Yeah. Yeah. I guess looking looking forward to that again is um, what's your first or you know twelve months or where where do you see yourself being in twelve months time? Okay. Uh, the message from the presentation, I, I think they're going to be fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things where the fitter you are, the, the faster your mind works, um, especially in the modern game uh, with the changes to the law, uh, the variations of it. It's rugby is constantly evolving and you've got to adapt. And that's what Reputation really doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's all dependable on how hard people work and whether they'll work for themselves or and you, the team. you see Colts topping that up too, you know, like having three Colt sides this year which have made the finals and things like that, those there's going to be young guys putting pressure oh, through definitely. the grades. The Colts have been fantastic uh, this year and, and that's credit to Steve Tucker as well as uh, his uh, coaching staff. So they've done a fantastic job in getting not only one Colts team on the field but three yeah. as well as making the finals. Uh, Moving forward, that's fantastic for from a great perspective because the recruitment and the retention process is just a little bit easier moving forward. Uh, we're not having to go and, and scourge the, the outskirts of the West to, to look for players. It's hard enough mm. at the moment, especially with, when you're competing against football, uh, AFL and rugby league. And everyone knows the West is a rugby league uh, stronghold. Mm. So instead of competing with those sports, we can try and minimise the recruitment process instead of having to go out, it gives us a lot more time to focus and put out all our energies into what's going on at the club and where we can try and build a platform for the Colts moving into grade and make that transition as seamless as possible. But even even with the women having gone to the grand final, they, yeah. are, they are willing. How was that? Uh, yeah. um, unfortunate, Warringah had a really you know, exceptional winger there, but uh, it was a willing game. I mean. I was, it was. I think the boys physical. did physical up front. Yeah, took it, ran hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, the women's as well as uh, the women's team, they they're pretty much, from my perspective, they're pretty much being the benchmark, uh, not only in Sydney rugby but also for this club. Mm. Uh, they've been outstanding, and hopefully, some of the top grade boys as well as Colts can get out and support the women and actually see what it is to. To play physical rugby. Jerome, we're just talking about the, the girls and playing rugby, which is really fantastic, the Colts and that. So I guess now looking about um, your coaching dynamics and things like that now, we, we have four grades uh, that need to be looked after and, and how, how do you see that fitting into your plan for next year? And what's, what's your probably your short-term goal or, um, you know, besides probably winning the first game or...? At the moment, first-term goal is get through the off-season as well as the, the pre-season. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of, of the organisation I'd like to um, look at addressing. Um, first and foremost, in terms of players understanding rugby. Rugby is a simple game, but people make it more complicated than what it really is. And players who may watch, whether it be ITM, Curry Cup, Heineken Cup, Super Rugby, and even international games, can watch it for hours on end, but don't quite understand um, the dynamics of rugby and the fundamentals of rugby. They look at all the, the fancy parts, bits and, and pieces of rugby, but don't necessarily address the basic uh, necessities of how rugby should be structured and should be run. So would you have a style, like are we going to be, you know, uh, this year running rugby? But I mean, some, some days we, we attacked yeah. And other days, we, you know, when we played manly, it's probably the best defensive effort I've seen. Nineteen straight oh, penalties, yeah. and then other days when you know, we 
we get down against West and we run the ball like they do. So yeah, yeah. there will be a um, different style to how we've uh, approached it the last couple of years, but that's only that we'll look to. So that will depend the on the team in front of you. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's not a one glove. It's all in. You have one dynamic of we're only going to have the one structure and the one pattern. Um, like I said, rugby is all about adapting to the environment and to your opposition. Don't necessarily need to build your game plan around the opposition. You base it on the strengths um, as well as the weaknesses of your current roster, and then adapt it to who you're going to play the opposition. So that gets down to self-discipline and and and, oh, a lot of it, I think, and you know. Yeah, self-discipline is something that, as people, you should carry before you go to get onto the rugby field. Uh, that that starts from your home, uh, as well as your work life, and then your rugby, the rugby aspects of it. So that's something that individually they'll bring to the table, and it's just my job to try and manage it. And so, how do you see yourself? Um, doing that, are you going to be an authoritarian in that way? Like, um, if you're mouthed off, you introduce to the second grade coach, or you know, it's a, something you sit down and uh, analyse the games, and then say, "Well, this is what we need to do." And, and, and bit of both, I think. Uh, my teaching uh, background might come into play, but no, I mean, from from my perspective, uh, it's it starts from training. That's something that I'll start doing moving forward. Is just videoing uh, the sessions, see how guys uh, operate on the training paddock, and then tweak it if it needs to be tweaking. But well, we, I know in the commentary box and things like that and doing the reports that we, we have a PM, a Paramount a moment, like that's the chip kick in the 25 when yeah. we're down 60 nil. How do you how do you get that out? Oh, I shouldn't say, they haven't done it for the last, you know, probably 18 months or so, but the, there's, there are those Paramount moments when there's a, the rush of blood and... and uh, yeah. They, they, they think they can take the light on or, or they don't turn up. Yeah. I don't want to rein them in in terms of their, their flair or their own abilities. Uh, if anything, it's more of just getting to understand when the best time to try things. Um, Rugby is all about trying. If, you, if you're not going to try, what's the point of playing? I mean, yes, you can be flary or you can be conservative in your approach, but for my perspective and the way I like to look at rugby is that you can afford to make errors or come up with errors as long as it's created opportunities mm. and you're not going to create opportunities if you're not going to try, if you're not willing to try. Yeah, yeah and that comes back to what I said about having an understanding of, of rugby itself, um, the, whether if you look at it from a dynamic perspective, a micro perspective or just the basic fundamentals of it. Um, Rugby is one of those sports where you've got a chance your arm from time to time. Uh, you can't really restrict yourself and be conservative. There's a time and place to be conservative, but, and this is the thing that has been harped on for the last couple of years, it's in the grassroots rugby, and you see it with the Wallabies, is that they talk about Wallabies not playing uh, the Australian way. So you ask your question, what is the Australian way? And what is the New Zealand way, what is South African, any country around the world. Rugby, especially moving into the modern era, it's well constricted by quantitative measurements, analytical analysis of the game, and we forget common sense and just playing what's in front of you. Yeah. You know, you take, your, you take yourself back to when you were a kid, you have the ball in front of you, just run, yeah. just play with your instincts, and that's almost becoming too robotic in terms of how we adapt or how we play. But I guess, yeah, would I you know. see, uh, we're, we're now leading to 2014, that the four grades are all, as a squad, will you have a first grade squad or will, you know, depending, you've spoke about that, it'd probably start to start off with it, but it probably won't necessarily be what it is, depending. In the off season, it'll be one club. Yeah. So all the grades, uh, all the Colts and women's will all train and be under the one umbrella. And that's part of the new culture moving forward. Um, so that way there's no segregation amongst the players. Colts players can interact with the upper grade as well as the women's. Um, we don't want to be a business like manner where we only see faces and those are the faces we know. We don't know names, we don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. The more close -knit the players can be off the field, the better they are on the field. Yeah, I think so too.
I've got quite high expectations, not only of myself, but also um, my work environment as well as the players. So that's something I would like to address with the players before off-season starts, is setting the expectations as well as uh, getting the standards right from the beginning, from the get-go. So there's no misunderstanding, there's no blurred lines. Black is black, white is white, and there's no grey area. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's hard. It's hard. To yeah, it's, it's always easier said than done. Uh, and that's that's the juggling act that as a coaching coaching group we we need to look to address and it starts from the manage, starts from the coaching management. So you, that that will be explained to all the boys then, uh, you know, and girls. Uh, yeah, and girls. Ladies. Sorry, yeah, and, and making certain they actually understand that you know that philosophy and things like that. Yes, before we actually kick off into off season, we will have an induction, yeah. and so that way we can answer. Um, any other questions that the players may have, uh, whether it be about the coaching staff, the contents that's going to be delivered, how the trains are going to be structured, the systems that are going to be in place. Uh, I'd like to address that from the get-go before we get into the other So, so um, do you have another all black up the sleeve like Sassine or something like that? <laughs> we, oh, we, you know, it's, it's going to be a, you know, a little bit of a special for us. You never know. You never know. <laughs> so I think it's time to maybe call in some favours. So I, I, I'd probably see that Parramatta is, is uh, like, I guess our message is that we're about community, we're about the players and things like that, and then building on that because that's what we offer. Yeah. Uh, oh, definitely. Um, especially here at Parramatta, if you look at Parramatta as a whole, as well as the people in it, we tend to forget, and this is something, if you look at professional sports, how far in advance that they've come in terms of uh, with it, like monetary supplements and, and whatnot. We tend to forget why players start to play rugby, or any sport for that matter. You've got to do it for the right reasons. And I've seen it with my peers as a rugby player as well as, as a coach. Players lose sight of why they started to play rugby. It's to enjoy the the time with your mates and play for the right reasons. If you play for money and all the other external uh, externalities around it, you're not going to go far in, the, in rugby or in any sport. The love needs to be for the game itself, nothing else. So how long do you see you spending here? You've done three now, another three, or what have you? It's a, it's a million dollar question. Uh, I've been here three years. And I'd like to say I'm in it for the, the long haul. Um, I'd like to see the club in a better position when I leave to what it was when I've come on board. Um, Rugby is one of those funny uh, elements where a lot of people only focus on the abilities of rugby itself. But rugby is a small aspect of our life. Some of us are fortunate enough to be involved after playing, but as a player, you're only in a small, yeah, a small window of opportunity. So, from my perspective, if I can do my bit to educate and mentor the players, so that way they better their lives, whether they're better wives, better husbands, better boyfriends, a better, better fathers, out after the life here at rugby, oh, in terms of a rugby mm -hmm. uh, institute, I find that that's a win-win situation. Rugby, like I said, rugby is the byproduct. Yeah, but the other part too is giving the players the opportunity to access. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing that that's that's my role is to building a platform and a service for them to launch their playing careers or their personal careers. Um, and that's the juggling act is understanding each player individually in terms of what their needs are and what their necessities are, and how myself and my coaching staff can help them. With the the other coaches, you, you see developing them too, uh, and mentoring them also, and and how you, Glenn seemed to be able to pull people in from other places, and you'll be doing the same. There's an element of that. Um, my role, as well as coaching first graders, as coaches, we've got to leave our egos and our resumes to, to the side. We're here, and we need to look at the bigger picture. We're here to provide a service to the players, nothing else. And we need to have a better understanding of the rugby matrix so that way we can 
deliver the contents of what we need to deliver to to progress their playing stages from where they are now to the next level, whether that be playing overseas with the Super Rugby or even higher honours. There's no point coaching players if the players know more than the coaches. There will be an element of that. A lot of the players will have a lot of input into it, but we need to provide them with a platform and service. Okay, I guess the the the, the uh, last one or the last couple of questions. I've got two questions. Is um, it, it is true that you didn't know Glenn before you started? How did you come to Parramatta? Came well, he didn't drive an hour down to Canberra and talk to you or something like that. No, but I was living uh, locally. I was living in Redfern at the time. One of the players who uh, he's an ex-player now, Law of Law Law, who was a halfback here, uh, so just gave me a quick call and see whether I was doing doing consultancy um, and doing a um, bit of work in rugby. I said, oh, I'm not at the moment. So he just said, oh, we don't have a back coach. How about you pop down and have a look? So I said, Billy and Glenn an email, see whether they're interested in having any coaches. So they said, come down, have a look. Pop down to training, had a look, had a chat, had a yarn, and basically that's all she wrote. And I've been here since. Okay, great. So, um, as an opposition player, if I could find one that played against you, how would they describe you? Cheeky. 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 So, uh, do you self-evaluate? You're harder on yourself than... Oh, definitely. You have to be. I've got to be... And this is something that you know, I, was, I was like as a player. I've got to be my own, my own critic and my worst critic in terms of what worked, what didn't work. Um, and plus my wife, she's, she's quite harsh on me as well. She'll tell me how it is. And so I guess uh, you, you've got people around there who can support you to stand back and say you need to have a look at this or you need to, um, you know, how do I change if yeah. I need to change or adapt to stuff? Oh, definitely. Because I think, I think that man management part's the hardest part. Yeah. It really is. You know, uh, yeah. and we were just talking about man management. But probably the last um, question, and, and you've already alluded to this, is that it's not about you, and this will probably be the last time that we want to talk to you personally about yourself, uh, because you want to be putting um, the players first. Yeah. So, like, there are a lot of words that, that come to mind, but and saying that, I mean, it's quite a difficult question, especially when you're you asked it and uh, doing an interview. But I like to think that I'm a a people's person, uh, putting not only the players but other stakeholders and just people in general before myself. Um, always work hard uh, behind the scenes. Don't need necessarily need to be recognised or uh, spoken about. Those that are no no, um, that's why the players always have to come before uh, myself or any other coaching staff. At, at the end of the day, they're the ones who, who are putting the effort as well as their bodies on the line. So they're the ones who should be uh, getting the rewards and all the kudos. If, if coaches go into coaching to be recognised um, and applauded for, we're in the sport for a wrong reason. And that's why that, I'm not here for that reason. I'm here to provide a service for the players. If they do well, then... So you, you believe the there. players will play for you? You know, coaches bring the best out in the players? We'll soon find out. Hopefully that's, um, that's the plan. But they need to play for each other first and foremost before they, they play for myself as, as a coach. Um, they need to play for each other uh, first and foremost. Well, Gerard, I want to wish you all the best. I'll we'll be looking forward to working with you uh, this year. And Thank you. Uh, the results will be on the paddock and out here at uh, Maryland's Rugby Park and uh, future moving forward. Hopefully we don't pull Sydney University in the first game. But, uh, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. Better. But better bring, bring it on. Yeah. So all the best and thank you very much for taking on a difficult job and, and uh, the last three years and, and, and the future. Yep, thank you.